Goeiedag en hartelijk welkom bij die laatste episode van Agri Monitor voor februari. Ik is Elvira Hatting en ik kan hier vandaag saam met jullie. Nou in vandaagse niesgesprek, kijk ons dan nou naar verbossing. Het is een video door Agribank, sy Erastus Ngaruka, waar hy nou gesels oor specifieke bosse, um, wat vir, bosverdichting op plaatsen veroorzaak en ook die uitwerking van hierdie bosse. Nou ja, baie van hierdie bosse gebruik baie, baie water, wat natuurlijk problemen van sy eie in het droe land soos Namibie veroorzaak. In die plaatste segment kyk ons na een video dier The Essence of Africa. Nou ja, hulle keier op een plaas in die Omahekki streek, plaas vastdraai. Nou, dit is een indiens opleidingscentrum waar boere meer leer oor organische boerderij. Hier is op dan nou deel 1 van twee video's. Die tweede deel van die video zal ons dan in volgende weekse episode kyk. Dankie dat jullie ingeskakel het, ons hoop jullie geniet het. Funding faculty and the risk aspects that are related to the potato production is also The Agricultural Bank of Namibia's Agri Advisory Services Division offers training to farmers and bank clients in various farming enterprises in all 14 regions of Namibia through face-to-face -face sessions. The AgriLearn online platform will share production content on various agriculture farming enterprises to build the knowledge of farmers from all walks of life. Join us as we embark on this virtual journey towards sustainable farming as we zoom into the basics of rangeland management. Hey, good day farmers, my name is Erastus Ngaruka. I'm the technical advisor for livestock and rangeland management for AgriBank's advisory services. So we are going to talk about bush encroachment. Uh, what is bush encroachment? It's an aggressive invasion of an area by a certain woody plant species. Yeah, for example, the Senegalia mellifera or the Vachelia uh, uh, reficiens, uh, Dichrostachys in area, those are some of the invading species amongst others. So this increase in density also causes an imbalance in the plant species population uh, in that particular area. For example, uh, when these woody species increase their density, they also displace other valuable forage materials, for example, grasses. So for livestock farmers, maybe farmers farming with sheep or cattle, uh, they will prefer grass. But then there should be a balance in terms of the uh, vegetation so, but when the woody species increase in density, they outcompete uh, the grass species. Thus, now they dominate the area, uh, leaving the animals with almost nothing to, uh, to graze on. So the plants as they are, they live in competition and they compete for sunlight, they compete for soil moisture and for nutrients and so forth. So, but when one species uh, is very much efficient in utilizing those resources, it normally uh, pushes the others out or it outcompetes the others. So what happens, uh, these plants, the woody species are very efficient, their root system is widely distributed and also deep rooted, so they can extract as many nutrients and moisture uh, from the soil. Uh, for example, uh, there's a study that uh, indicated that, that an, a mature uh, Senegalia mellifera tree can uh, consume about 70 liters of water per day. So imagine if you now have this whole area covered by, the, by such a plant consuming 70 liters of water per day. So in that process, they also take away moisture from other plants and also they dehydrate the, the, the swells. All right, so uh, another issue with the uh, bush plants is that 
when they cover an, an area, they form a thick canopy uh, that also inhibits sunlight penetration or even when rainfall uh, comes, uh, some raindrops will not even uh, be uh, falling on that swell where the bush is, uh, meaning those swells will be deprived of moisture. And no other plants, as, uh, plants like uh, grasses and other useful uh, plants can grow near the bush because they are pushed away, because there's no sunlight and there's also competition for water and so forth. All right, and there are factors that you can attribute to bush encroachment. And the main one is overgrazing also, because overgrazing removes, uh, you remove the grass, which again result in uh, the loss of competitive ability of the grasses. And they will, never, they will not compete with the woody plants because their ability or their density is reduced by overgrazing. And then these woody plants also, they produce a lot of seeds and then they also disperse their seeds very efficiently. And for those that are browsable, the browsers, the animals that are browsing on them also uh, distribute these seeds as they are also uh, foraging around. So bush encroachment is one of the form of uh, rangeland degradation and it must be addressed as well. So how do you address bush encroachment? It's through bush thinning where you have to remove some plants, uh, some woody plants, not just clearing everything. You only have to remove a few just to allow opening in the grazing so that even animals are able to go, uh, to go through and graze so that even yourself as a farmer, you are able to go through into your farm and look for your animals and so forth. And as well to allow some sunlight, sunlight penetration uh, onto the ground and also some raindrops to also cover almost every part of the soil. All right, so uh, uh, woody plants, they have also various uses. Uh, when you are debushing or when you are bush thinning, you can also use the biomass. You can use uh, them for charcoal, it can be for wood, it can be for other materials like maybe droppers, uh, poles and so forth. So uh, the cost of thinning out bush can also be recovered through using the, the biomass uh, for those uh, uh, items that I've mentioned that you can use. All right, so farmers, let us improve our grazing areas by also addressing bush encroachment. And also, apart from thinning out bush, you also need to revegetate. You also need to bring, reintroduce these grasses into the grazing areas for them to just quickly uh, produce their seeds and then disperse themselves. And then you create a balance uh, in, the, in your grazing area. So you need to have sufficient grass and you also need to have a fair distribution of woody plants in your grazing area. Uh, bush encroachment is one of the, uh, the biggest problems in Namibia. Uh, about 40 million hectares of land in Namibia is covered with bush or is uh, bush encroached. So there's a lot of efforts that farmers are trying to make sure that they address the problem. And in the process, they also have to bring uh, to get back their value in terms of bush control, where they have to now sell the biomass. But then, what is the problem with bush encroachment? I have indicated that they displace other valuable plant materials like the grass that we need for our grazing animals. So where you find bush, there will be no grass, unless it's only grass that prefers those uh, microclimates under the bush. But the most valuable grasses will not grow under the, the bush pieces. They will grow a distance away. For example, the Stipagroses uniplumis, your Syncris liares, those good grasses will always grow away from the uh, bush plants. So meaning the bush also narrow the grazing areas uh, for your animals. So even if you look here around, you can see that there's no grass here. It's only the herbs and the weeds that are growing here because them, they don't mind the environment under the bush. They can grow there. Whereas for the good perennial grasses that we always want, they would prefer some sunlight, enough sunlight. They would prefer enough moisture. They would prefer also less competition in terms of extracting nutrients and soil moisture from the soil. So that's why you will not find the good valuable grasses under the bush species here. So they always be a distance away. So that's the aim of also bush thinning is to create openings then so that sun sunlight can penetrate and also stimulate other regrowth uh, from the valuable plants. Because there's always, there's a seed bank uh, that has to be uh, uh, opened and it's only the conditions that are, when you improve the conditions in that microclimate that will also stimulate the seed bank to open for grass to, to, to grow again. That's it for now.
Join us next time for more valuable insights. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to avoid missing out on new content. Also, follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages for more content. Did you know you can buy a new or second-hand vehicle such as light delivery vans, trailers, small trucks and tractors for agricultural use? The repayment period for these vehicles ranges between 5 and 10 years. Contact your nearest Agribank branch or visit our website at www.agribank.com.na for more information about this loan product. You can also visit us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and YouTube. Agribank, your all season bank. We can equally produce world-class organic crops and horticultural produce. And this is the reason the Comeho Namibia Development Agency set up this vocational training center here at Fasterai Farm in the Omaheke to teach young Namibians how to be organic farmers. To train those artisans that will go out there, be ambassadors, produce food for this nation and change lives of their communities and themselves and transform the lives of many Namibians out there. In Unske Epson, the Hauptding Unske Asani Boy. School is going to be in the Hauptding Unske Asani Boy. 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 Ucapkan <laughs> Students coming to Fast Dry get a Level 2 National Certificate in Horticulture and Crop Husbandry, where each student grows their own food as part of their training. They are free to decide what to plant in their own little garden. <laughs> Na na tape kaya makoi gange. Kuali tapurura ko mo mo no mo mo mina moto ninge totun mina itape ke kome wa itape ke non tanga kome ho o iguse mo nyepe na na ikura ya kuru ko na ukauke na no itora mevo. Nge mo mukan itape ke resi yoyo ina imbumburu na ho tumbura. Ezi zonja mazetu. The special thing about what we do and what sets us apart from other training institutions is it's hands-on. Students learn while working, learning in order to get a job. So this is my seed bed. I've planted butternuts. They are doing well. They are growing. And then by next year, it will harvest. Yeah, I'm doing great. This is my whole seed bed alone. I want to become a farmer at the same time. I want to give it back to the community. That's, that's, that's my plan. 
this is the entire garden now. As you can see, Mr. Terry, soon you will be harvesting your butternuts, ne? How did you manage to give such love and attention? You can see that they are really carrying a lot of fruit. Yes. Commitment, my friend. Don't parasite so insects. You never see them while it's hot. You need to get up early in the morning so that you come and survey your, your place. Yeah, can we go see your things also? Now we are heading to my plot, this side. Who's the owner of this? This is for Daphne Oates. This is sweet melons. As you can see, this is already a fruit which is here. Yeah, very soon we will yeah. be eating. Very soon you will be harvesting. Not so long. And this is our lucerne. Oh, I like that guy. I like that guy. This is our lucerne plot which grows. What did you plant here? I planted sweet melons. Before I came here, I was just sitting at home, I was just doing a small business. I used to sell sausages and hot dogs. Yes, just for survival. So that's why I decided, let me try to further my education and gain more knowledge. My dream is to become a great farmer, and an organic farmer which is certified. Each student garden plot is assessed. This is an enjoyable and effective way to evaluate their practical skills. Many of our young Namibians grow up in rural areas, so speaking and reading English can be really tough. But with a garden plot, you don't need great language skills. What you learn to grow is healthy and nutritious organic crops. Learning by doing. I enjoy the course and I enjoy our practicals. I'm gaining a lot of experience. Like when I go to the shop to buy a vegetable, I'm crying. It's like I'm wasting something I can do for myself. Yeah, that's what I'm learning right here. We created this practical training methodology because industries want young graduates with real-life farming experience. Good afternoon, everyone. So today we are starting with compost making, OK? So what is compost? The first question we always have to ask ourselves, what is compost? Matilda? It's because we are dealing with organic farming. Sometimes when I go back home, I really miss my place. I enjoy this place, it's very nice. We are together, we are now like a family here. Yeah, it's a good place to be. To no biri no hore imwe, o tu vitere no biri po 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 fast dry heto. Pai fengi no tatu ngomborot. Tatu ji i kuya no ve azamo chigade na, to i kuna seene. Ndeshwa toro baro rumu sukuni no sukuri amu sinyong. I'm connected and working for a company in Germany called Afrocrops, uh, based in Berlin, to train and teach young people. And this is the reason why I'm here, to set up and establish this place. I'm shaking hand with a Kalahari here. Okay, now fix it. I have realized that many are coming from a tough background. There's a big improvement, not only when it comes to the edu education level, what they do in the field, the training, the, the skills, the adapt here. It's, it's really amazing what I can see. Even the place is, is supplying also good food to them. At Fasterai, we ensure young people who have not finished school get a second chance. This part is also not bad, but until now I think Mike is even better than this one, yeah. to be fair. Mm. 
looks really proper. This was really the best welding mm. we had in this competition. Yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Where's Mike Michael? and Matilda. Okay. <laughs> Just bring it in. There. Yeah. All right. Hey. Matilda can do me the best welder from the girl's side, and this one is also the best welder from the the guy's side. It's Michael and This week's feilings like dan soos volg. Op 28 februari is Agra op Okahanya met de feiling, die NLA met de klein en groot veefeiling, op Bloemvelde in die WLA met de klein veefeiling, op Rioboot. Op 1 maart is Agra met de feiling op Karasberg, Blauberg, op Grootfontein en die NLA met de klein en groot veefeiling, op Kois. Op 2 maart is Agra dan nou met veilings op Marintal en Ochivarungu, die NLA met de klein en groot veiling op Geetmanshoop en die WLA met een groot veiling in Bintuk. Op 3 maart is Blauberg op Wilhelmstel, die NLA op Marintal en die WLA met een groot veiling op Gobabes. Ja, soos die jaar voorder raak die dagboek vir landbouwers dan nou langer. Op 4 maart hou die Baieboerderijvereniging van Namibia hou jou eerste jaarvergadering by die Tannery. Dit gebeur om 10.30. Nou, dit sou aanvankelijk vroeger gebeur het, hierdie datum is dan nou uitgestel. En tijdens die geleentheid kan jeningproducenten hou producte uitstel, daar sal een jeningproe wees en boere kan dan nou ook wees wat anders hulle van al baie maak. Nou, daar is een contactnummer Karen, um, vir mense wat het wil bijwoon, meld net jou plek aan. Op 8 maart um, word daar dan nou in die gebabes omgeving op die plaas Molly een inlichtingsdag oor veeproduksie aangebied. Nou, um, dit is dier Karen en Mario Metzger. Hulle is in oktober vir die ledejaar as die Namibie Lampo en die groot veeproducente van die jaar ingewees. Daar is dan nou ook een nommer waar jy by Karen moet registreer of by Rina van die NLE. Um, as jy belang sal om te gaan. Tussen 14 en 17 maart is de tijd vir Pluimvee daar. Um, eerstens tussen 14 en 17 maart wordt de gezamenlijke promotietour met die thema streef na een volhoudbare pluimveesektor op Ketmanshoop, Marintal en Reelboot aangebied. Um, Agribank in die Pluimvee producentenvereniging van Namibie is dan nou die gas heren. As mense belangstel om te gaan, moet hulle by Bertha Iambo registreer. Op 17 maart word daar nou ook een Pluimvee inlichtingsdag weer die Pluimvee producente vereniging by die NG Kerk in Seiderhof, Windhoek, tussen 10 uur en 1 uur aangebied. Die thema is dan nou die selfde en belangstellendes moet ook vir Iambo kontak om te registreer. Van deze week se vleesprijse, dis vir die week van 27 februari. Nou, by Mietgau, grade A, A, B en B, word daar nou tussen 61 en 62,50 dollar betaal per kilogram op beefkoor, word producente vir die selfde grade tussen 59 en 64 namabiese dollar betaal. En Mietgau in die noordelike kommunale gebiede betaal daar nou tussen 30 dollar en 43 dollar 13 cent per kilogram vir hierdie grade vlees. C grade Mietkou betaal in Windhoek dan nou 60 dollar, op Okahanya betaal Beefkoor tussen 57 dollar en 64 dollar vir die C grade en in die noordelike kommunale gebied betaal Mietkou tussen 28 dollar en 41 dollar 13 vir C grade vlees. Nou, veilingspryse iets wat afwaard beweeg, buiten dan nou lyk my vir 
koeie en koeie met kalwers. Tollies het dan nou die afgelopen week vir een gemiddelde prijs van 34,57 dollar per kilogram verkoop, verse 32,11 dollar, stoorverse 30,91 dollar, slagosse 31,91 dollar, slagverse 31,05 dollar, koeie maar tot vet tussen 25,04 dollar tot 31,36 dollar per kilogram slagbille. Um, 29,13 dollar per kilogram, koeie met kalwers 14,15 dollar, 14 dollar 575, um, slagskaap, dorpers 32,72 dollar per kilogram, vetstaarte 32,43 dollar per kilogram en bokke dan nou 1053 nou is het dollar gemiddeld, nou ja dan nou goeie tyd as jy dan nou een paar tollies en stoorversens die meer wil aankoop. Ons sê vir julle dankie dat julle dan nou een paar minute van julle dag aan ons afgestaan het. Ons hoop julle het geniet. Volgende week, selfde plek, selfde tyd, maak ons weer so. Mooi loop tot dan.